All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back and tuning in today. I am really excited about my guest. She is known over on Instagram and YouTube as Steak and Butter Gal, but her name is Bella. She has a really great story and she's doing a lot of amazing things. And I just wanted to bring her on and talk with her today. So thank you for being here today, Bella. Oh, thank you for having me, Sarah. Yeah, you are. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit because when I was your age, I was drinking and partying and eating whatever the hell I wanted. And I just like, look at what you're doing at your age. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are giving yourself literally the best head start in life and just like the best foundation. So let's talk a little bit about your story, like your age, what you do, all of that stuff. Of course. Yeah. So I'm 24. I'm going to turn 25 in two months in August. And I grew up thinking that I would be a classical pianist, a classical musician. Um, My mom kind of just raised me having this idea for me. And I grew up with two sisters. So three girls, she wanted all of us to be very performance-based type of careers. So she had me in music with piano and violin. She had my older sister in ballet and my little sister was in like painting and arts, right? So we were all very just trained to be you know, on stage, always turned on, like have your best behavior. And it was a lot of stress, to be honest. Mm. And my mom made sure that I got into a good music school. I went to the new school for undergrad, but then I ended up at Juilliard for a master's degree. And, you know, I spent my whole life hours, blood, sweat, and tears at the piano, just uh, trying to perfect that, that art. And actually just a year into uh, doing my master's at Juilliard, I started realizing, hey, I'm not not feeling very ideal. Like my mental clarity is really bad. I can't really practice hours on end without feeling like I'm exhausted. Mm-hmm. I can't feel I can just perform this piece without having a bunch of memory slips. Um, and it was kind of concerning. So I guess this is all to say I I was in search of a better diet, mostly for the mind performance, Mm. like the mental clarity, because that's kind of what mm, being a pianist and a musician is all about is like, what is going on in your mind? How sharp can you be? How creative can you get? Um, So that really mattered to me. So I do have to preface by saying that during that time I was vegan. So I was, Mm. yeah, I was already vegan for almost six years. So I started to realize, okay, this vegan diet is probably not working well for me anymore. And I think it's time to at least take a full panel blood test. Right. And at that time, my parents were urging me to do it because they were also concerned about my diet being vegan. So I went ahead and went to a doctor and got the results. Um, And my doctor seriously just sat me down and told me that I was deficient in so many things. And I still remember she said my vitamin D was the lowest she has ever seen in any of her patients. I think it was at a seven or six. Wow. It was pretty much none. So it was very concerning. I was shocked and I didn't have my period. Um, So she kind of slapped me back to reality and told me, hey, either just eat some animal food, some meat, or take a bunch of supplements. And I'm glad that I was young and that I was willing to be open-minded that day. (laughs) Cause usually I'm very <laughs> stubborn and you know how it is like with vegans, you get into this mental trap that mm-hmm. this diet is the way. Um, so what happened was I went home and I started researching vegans who start eating meat. Cause I was so scared that mm. if I were to eat meat, I would die. Um, but then I started seeing all these videos and podcast episodes of vegans going carnivore. Oh. And, yeah. And I know it's extreme. I still get told by so many people to this day that I am so extreme, but this is just my personality type. It's like all in or not at all. So these videos did catch my eye and that is how I got exposed to the carnivore diet. Wow. You know, I'm the same way though. Like I was vegan. I'm super extreme. So I get it. I think a lot of people that probably listen to the podcast and watch your channel and my channel both really relate to that. It's like, you know, why not just take it all the way? (laughs) Yes, exactly. It's like, I can't, I never was able to do moderation. I think it's 
the way that I was brought up by my mom. It's like, if I'm going to practice, I better practice all day and get it all done or just not do this profession at all. Like that's yeah. how I was raised to think about life and everything that I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you watched some videos and then you were like, you know what, I'm just going to give this a try. Let's talk about that transition a little bit. Yeah. And like we said, you know, all in, I literally went from vegan to carnivore overnight. So just wow. a switch, I didn't even ease my way into it. Um, now I actually don't regret it, even though I know, because I did that, I went through a lot more, uh, negative symptoms, a lot more difficult, I guess, adaptation mm -hmm. type of, you know, feelings. And one of them being diarrhea, loose stools, just oh, yeah. so bad. That and low I was stomach acid. You just didn't have it from all the years of not eating. That's what people don't understand about veganism is you're killing your stomach acid and we need that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I came in with no stomach acid. So eating all this steak and fats, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was terrible on my stomach because I couldn't digest it. I mm -hmm. went six years of high carb zero fat practically. Yeah. And then suddenly meat and protein and fats. So explosive, loose, all types of, you know, loose stools, really, really bad. Um, but I pushed through it. I actually didn't end up taking any, uh, ox bile or like the digestive supplements. Mm. What I did do was, um, I put some apple cider vinegar in my bone broths whenever I made it, not sure if it helped, but it definitely cut the nausea for me. Um, and I, I also learned like through trial and error, it's probably best to avoid cooked fats for now. Mm -hmm. So I tried to, yeah. So I tried to eat, um, you know, cold butter and tried to eat rare steaks, never made any more oxtail soups. Cause that was just immediately. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I've gotten nauseous from the oxtail soup before it's yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So much fat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was like the first whole month was basically loose stools and being so confused about whether or not this was right for me. But what I was sure about is that I was feeling better, definitely mm. feeling more energetic. Uh, oh, and I do have to share that when I was vegan, because I'm here with my family now, my older sister, she'll often remind me of how I was back then. She said, do you remember when you were vegan, you literally would shake picking up anything. Oh, like, wow. Would tremble, just picking up anything a little heavier, you know, and not even that heavy. And now she said, seeing me so strong and just so confident, it's just complete change. Wow. I love that. And so confidence for you, that's what you just mentioned that changed and your anxiety. I mean, performing, can you talk about that just a little bit? Of course, confidence is everything when you're on stage being a performer. Um, and I have to say it's so nice to be able to not have anxiety attacks on like behind the stage. Like when you're walking out in front of an audience, not having an, an anxiety attack is just seriously life-changing because you don't have to go through all of these stressful feelings, which really weigh you down. Uh, I would get sweaty hands. I would get so nervous. And then when I walk on stage, it's like, I am going to F up for sure. Just these <laughs> negative thoughts all the time. Yeah. So negative. Um, but now it's like, I have this, this wave of positivity all the time. It's like, life is so good. I feel so grateful for all of these things. And it's just about positive thoughts. And then when it's time to perform, it's like, I'm going to slay this performance. So I have to, I have to say my mindset just shifted naturally. I didn't really have to do anything proactive to change and become like this. I think it just came with better health or something to do with the nutrients in the meat that I'm eating. It's just helping my brain be less negative and be less anxiety ridden and depressed. Yeah. I mean, there's a big connection between the gut and the brain. We know that. And, you know, we also need those amino acids to help build and support the brain. And we don't get that on a plant-based diet, like essential amino acids. We're just not getting those. Right. Right. So yeah. I felt it. Yeah. How long did it take before you stopped having a lot of the adaptation symptoms? Uh, so the loose stools took about two, three months to completely go away. And I felt like I could tolerate as much fat as I needed to eat. Um, I actually just had this huge craving for a lot of fat. So mm -hmm. I always needed fats and, you know, I had some tips and tricks to like not have loose stools or as bad of a loose stool, 
when I was adapting, and that was again, cold and raw fats over hot cooked ones. Um, but then by month three, it was just any fat I could digest. And um, the energy, the mental fog, I would say just a few weeks of eating carnivore. And I felt like my mind was performing better than it used to when I was vegan, especially in the practice room. Wow. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So it didn't take a super long, it wasn't like years of things that you had to do to, to undo kind of the damage you were experiencing. No. And I do have to credit. It's probably my age, you know, I'm young, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's my body being able to quickly adapt Mm -hmm. despite like six whole years of being on a poor diet. But yeah, I feel like overall it was a quick, it was a quick adaptation. Yeah, definitely. And that is definitely something to take into account for sure. Cause that, you know, as we get older, just naturally we make less and less stomach acid and naturally our enzymatic function just drops as we get older and older. So yeah, it is. I, I think people probably in their twenties have a much easier time and probably don't need a lot of support than people rather in their like thirties and forties and fifties and beyond. Cause we've got people of all ages now coming to, try carnivore, you know, it's, it's been really put on the map, um, to help people with all kinds of issues, not just the mental issues, but a lot of physical issues as well. Yes. Yeah. So are you still performing or are you just now kind of doing the online thing? Yep. So everything in at least the classical world, live performance are kind of still on pause due to COVID. Ah. Yes. And it's especially apparent in New York city. And that's why I left because, you know, after I finished the two years of master's, by the way, I didn't even get a graduation ceremony because oh. COVID was at its worst, which is fine. It was online. Um, but after that graduation is when things really got shut down. All mm. concerts, all performances, everyone in the music realm there uh, was affected. So that's kind of what, that was like the catal- catalyst for me to just start exploring what I can do online. What I, what can I do at home where at least I can feel like I'm being productive and achieving something? Cause I always have this like mentality that I have to go, go, go and achieve something. Mm-hmm. Otherwise I didn't spend my day well, you know? Yeah. Um, so I just kind of used my thinking cap and then thought, Hey, I, I have this Instagram that I've been doing on the side while doing music this whole time called stick and butter gal. What if I just put some more energy and time into it? And that's when I started my YouTube channel and I just started sharing my story, but I, I tried to also combine it with music. So mm. to this day, you know, I'd really try to do as much music making and sharing through what I'm doing with all this carnivore content that I make. Um, but I definitely want to explore how I can, how I can do more music because I don't know if, if this is going to be my career, I would love to still share the skill that I've been studying my whole life. And somehow make a, you know, a blend. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Do you think when things open back up that you'll go back to performing? Absolutely. And I, I really want to go back to performing except being here where I live in Los Angeles, there's no music culture. So Uh, I, yeah. So I guess I have to just plan if I'm going to go back to New York city so I can go back to doing gigs and performances or just focus on doing this you know, online content and grow it and then somehow do online music making, which is actually huge now. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So a lot of options. Yeah, absolutely. I don't see why you couldn't. And I know that your audience probably really enjoys listening to your music as well. Yeah. I get a lot of great feedback. Yeah. That's cool. So let's talk a little bit about what you're doing online now. Cause you're doing, I'm like looking at some of the stuff I'm like, I can't keep up. You are doing so much now online and having, it looks like a lot of fun doing it. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I have to say going from a life of practicing 10 hours a day in the practice room to now spending time virtually with like hundreds of carnivores or making fun, creative videos about something I'm passionate about. It is, it is a career that I could never have dreamed of. So I feel like I'm having fun and this is my work. So I definitely feel like it's something that no matter what I do online, it's always going to be fun because I'm coming from a lifestyle of 10 hours of being alone in a practice room with no window. So it's, it's a huge step up, I would have to say, 
But uh, what I'm doing now, like a lot of YouTube videos, I love making videos. I love sharing what I'm learning and what I'm experimenting along this carnival journey. I, I do think, you know, um, these videos can help a lot of people who are interested in the diet, but my biggest purpose is to help, uh, ladies and guys around my age. Cause mm -hmm. I see just how big of a difference I made in my life this early on. So why not try to change, you know, people around my age so that they can live a better life and they can, you know, possibly have kids who are healthy and this will affect the generation after us. And I see this with my little sister, she's 22. And because I'm <clears throat> setting this example in front of her, she has reached out to me and said, I want to go carnivore. So by seeing how she's changing just day by day with this diet, I feel so hopeful that the videos that I make can also change young ladies um, and have them, you know, feel the effects that I am feeling in my little sister. Um, so yeah, just content creation, Instagram posts, and then this uh, 30 day challenge that I host, which is a lot more intimate, but so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that, you know, like I said, in the very beginning, when I was 24, it was just drinking and partying and I didn't care. And I think that so many young people, they don't really understand the consequences of poor eating habits and how it does affect your health and your children's health and all of that. So I think it's, your voice is definitely extremely important. Um, do you get a lot of people that are around your age reaching out to you or is it a lot more older people? Yeah. So I'm beginning to get a lot more younger, but when I first started off, surprisingly the, you know, when you look at your analytics, the, mm -hmm. the age group is actually 30 above 30 and above mostly yep. 40 and above. So I think it's probably because people who are interested in this diet and they search it up, they're at that age. So mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really reach the younger ones because they have no interest. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I feel fine. I can drink all yeah. night and be bulletproof the next day. So they don't really have much of an incentive to start making lifestyle choices. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a couple of you, I know you're doing this and there's some other people your age that are starting to put this out there. So I think it is, it, it will grow. It definitely will grow. Yes. I do hope so. And, um, yeah, the younger ones who I, who I have become friends with Lily, Lily Kane, uh, lady carnivory, JC and, uh, Laura, Laura underscore primal, I would say are the really hardworking ones. Nice. So it's good. I mean, that's good. A little community is forming and yeah, yeah I think it's, it's great. It's wonderful. I wish that I had done this in my twenties. It's like life would be so much so much better. I think so much easier, so many less health issues. And how do you get, how do you encourage people away from like, and I know like your sister, um, away from like the drinking and partying lifestyle, how does that play out with you socially? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I, I can't really, uh, well, firstly, I don't have any life experience of partying and, um, drinking and just having a social life. <laughs> Because yeah. only because my mom was, I don't know if you know the term tiger mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was a total tiger mom. And since I can remember, she was extremely overbearing on me and my sisters. So we, ne we never really got a taste of what it's like to be uh, super social and go to parties and have like a huge friend circle, which I really feel like I missed out on that. Um, but when I went off to college and I had freedom from her, um, I definitely <laughs> did go to parties and I did uh, try alcohol, right? But my first thought when I had my first cup of alcohol was, my gosh, this is disgusting. Why do people <laughs> drink this? You know, it's yep. so bad. Uh, so I, I guess I never really understood the hype around alcohol. I drank some, I felt a little tipsy and it really scared me because I'm like a person who just needs to be in control all the time. So mm -hmm. feeling like I was kind of out of control shook me up a little bit, but Hey, you know, if you love that social lifestyle, I guess you have to think, what are you willing to sacrifice? Right. Do you want yep. to drink all this alcohol for years and years and mess up your health, suffer all of these serious health conditions down the line, or just minimize it? You don't even have to cut it out completely, but yep. like minimize it and clean up your diet. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just, I don't know how many young people are, like I said, willing to do that. So it's good that you're, 
right. <laughs> putting that example out. Yeah. Cool. What does your mom think about your carnivore diet? Yeah, my mom, she's in China. So uh, she doesn't really see what I'm eating, which is great. Cause if she were to see how much I eat and what I'm eating, she definitely would be, you know, behind, on my back all day long about it. When I was vegan, she was extremely upset. Right. And then when mm. I told her I'm going to go eat meat again, she was just rejoicing, super happy. But then when she found out that I was eating meat exclusively, she started questioning. Right. But then, um, I shared, I shared with her that, Hey, I actually showed your egg pudding recipe and everybody loves it. So that's kind of my tactic is to divert her attention away from me eating only meat and just share about this egg pudding success, which always makes her happy. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Your egg pudding is amazing. I've tried it. I make it with egg yolks and oh. it it's all over Instagram. It's all over YouTube. Yeah. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Everybody loves your egg pudding. There's so many different versions of it. But yeah. It's really, really awesome to see all these renditions, just something so simple to be made into this consistency. So, so interesting. I feel like is what got it to be so popular. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was from my mom. I actually grew up eating it since I was a baby. Um, but yeah, like my mom, she thinks it's just whatever now she's not too upset anymore. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. <laughs> awesome. So what's like, I know you're doing a lot of experiments right now. You're trying a lot of different things. You're, how has your carnivore diet kind of shifted and changed over? What is it about two and a half years you've been carnivore now or yes. Yeah. Two and a half. Awesome. Um, so I started Jan January 1st, new year's of 2019. And I basically started off with eggs, butter, and beef kind of continued just eating those three, four, six months. And then I started introducing slowly new things like salmon. I learned that I prefer it raw. So I would have it sashimi style. And then I introduced other things uh, like pork belly, found out that kind of didn't work well with me. So it always ended up circling around beef, butter, and eggs. Now, the past two months, I started to cut down even more. So I cut out the beef. Uh, no. I cut out the butter and the eggs and <laughs> kept the beef <laughs> and just been doing beef only. So past two months, literally eating nothing but beef. And I have to say 90% of the time, it's just whole steaks. Mm. So I kind of have been leaving the ground beef as well and focusing on fresh whole cuts of meat. Uh, and it's been going great. I'm learning that I can actually increase my mental clarity and up my mental performance and productivity by cutting out those last two ingredients. Wow. Do you plan on staying that way for a while or are you going to try to reintroduce things? What are your plans? I initially planned to just do 30 days, but then I felt so good. You know how it is. You feel so mm -hmm. good. You want to extend it. You don't want to give it up just yet. So I'm now already a little bit more than two months in. And I honestly feel like I'll just do a few months whenever I feel like I want to cut it and maybe experiment with adding something in. I will, I don't have a set date just because yeah. I'm feeling so great. Yeah. Cool. And I see you're kind of doing some experimenting with fasting now too. Yes. I'm experimenting with some fasting. Um, and mostly because I'm guided by Raymond, who is a meter X coach, but he's very, uh, uh, what do you call like he he's in a lot of the meetings that I do in the challenge. So he mm. constantly is sharing his ideas around fasting and with his ideas, it's really not about the fasting. It's definitely more about how much are you eating? How much are you refeeding and what are you refeeding with? It's about that perfecting that art before approaching anything to do with fasting. So he helped me perfect it. And now I can do, um, up to 48 and with the 48 hour fast, it's, and again, I'm only doing all of these fasts for mental clarity. That's how, that's the reason why I started searching for diets, you know, better diets was for my mental performance. So when he told me fasting can help with that, I was like, yeah, I'm down to experiment with that too. So I've been adding that in, in the second month. And I've noticed with 48, it's just, it's like petting the unicorn. It is unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So you're doing that. You're staying on the beef 
diet only right now doing some fasting, you know, a lot of people say, and it could also be like age related as well. But a lot of people say like they start having hormonal issues with doing a lot of that type of thing with fasting. And Mm -hmm. do you, have you had any issues or I've kind of seen some of your stories where you say things have actually gotten better for you, right? Yes. So hormonal issues, I can talk about my period. It's still very regular comes at the same day that it usually comes, the only change is that it's gotten lighter in flow and in length of time. So instead of six to seven days, it's decreased to four to five days. Now, I'm not saying that it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it definitely is a lot. It's a better experience for me, uh, less pain. I usually have um, slight back discomfort, uh, which is a huge improvement from when I was vegan, right? But then- Yeah. But then doing beef only with here and there longer fasts, it's gotten down to four to five days with no symptoms. That's awesome. Yeah. That's for me, even at my age, it's five days max, which is crazy. Cause it was seven days before I started doing carnivore and I was like, well, I guess this is just how it is. And it was really painful. And I feel like a lot of women, like this is the thing that can help you with that time of the month, because it's really debilitating for lots of women. Oh yes, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you heard that from your community as well? Uh, about differences and changes? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, whenever I post about my period, like on Instagram in my stories, I'll always have replying DMs saying, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I wasn't the only one. Or it's like my period also got better. You know, my PMS symptoms got so much better. So definitely the the females in the community are feeling it too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other reason why I think it's important that we keep on just sharing about this because I mean, if I could tell you how many years I spent just in pain in my thirties and just not even knowing that if I changed my diet and kind of fix my lifestyle, I would kind of have no symptoms and it's just really unheard of. It's, it's, you know, women just struggle so hard with that monthly cycle. I know. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, it is. So are you doing, I see that you're, you're maybe doing a little bit of working out now. Were you working out when you first started carnivore? Is this something kind of new for you? Um, so I purposely dropped the gym when I first went carnivore, cause I really wanted to just focus on resting and recovering and eating so much. The amount that I was eating in the beginning, there was no way I could do any fitness or activity well, right? Because I was just so stuffed all the time. Mm. So I just dropped all exercise, you know, the walking to school and back was basically all I did. Um, and now I still don't really focus on exercise and I don't think I ever will. (laughs) I just don't like, I'm a lazy type of person. So if, if I can do something while exercising, for example, walking my dog or do like listening to a podcast while exercising, great but I'm not going to allot time just to exercise. (laughs) Maybe, maybe not, not yet. Um, So exercise is still kind of secondary. I always focus on the nutrition and uh, you know, the daily health practices that I can do like good habits. I feel like is, is more important for me. Yeah. What was, so what's like a typical day for you of like good, healthy habits? (laughs) Yeah. So I guess first thing in the morning, when I wake up, I go outside and get fresh air which is uh, mandatory anyways, because I have dogs. So I take them out on a walk and that usually helps set my day right. You know, fresh air, I walk, I move and I feel revived by the time I come back. And then I just start working. <laughs> so I just, yeah. be, I'm just like productive all day. And then I practice piano, which always helps calm me down. I feel like music now before it was like the stressor in my life because mm-hmm. I have to affect it. I have to enter competitions. But now it's a form of therapy. I can just release whatever is on my mind or on my shoulders through my music. And then I just do a lot of editing or I do challenge meetings, right? The days where I do challenge meetings are great because I can socialize and then I can learn more, share more um, and have fun. Um, And then uh, a lot of the ladies in the challenge, they share a lot of these daily health practices that I've adopted, for example, cold showers. So now Mm -hmm. whenever I shower, I do a cold shower, which is great. And then earthing. So just go outside, put the feet in the grass barefoot to feel grounded. You know, these little things I try to do as frequently as possible. Um, 
And then with the, with the feasting, right. Which is the most important part of my life. I make sure I'm eating a lot of beef and a lot of fat and it's simple as that. Nice. Yeah. So how is, I'm curious, how is the vitamin D now since you've switched to carnivore? Has it gotten better? Has it improved? So currently it's at 28 high twenties, still not ideal, but it has definitely shot up a lot. Uh, here where I live, it's by the water. So it can tend to get very foggy. Um, but when there's sun, I'm always outside getting that sun. I still have not resorted to vitamin D supplements because mm. I feel like summertime, right? I can rely on the sun. Uh, I do have the D minder app, which is really helpful. Oh yeah. I have that. Yes. yes. So I think it's helping the sunlight and going out at ideal times. Absolutely. Yeah. And the thing with the supplementation is just like, it can throw off other things in your body. And so we're so quick to want to take supplements, you know, but it can add the vitamin D supplements can definitely throw off things like your magnesium levels and that's your electrolytes. And yeah, not, not necessarily the best idea, I think, to take those vitamin D supplements. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of the supplements, you don't take any, do you, or, or do you No, I do not. Yeah, I do not. And I never have. Um, I used to think that organs were the perfect supplement for me, but I'm, you know, because of, uh, Judy's podcasts and information that she shared, um, I've been a little bit more cautious with organs. And I think the timing was perfect actually, because I was doing beef only, I mm. wasn't eating organs anyways. So I'm just going to continue not adding it back in, but I used to treat my organs as my supplements. Yeah. I used to eat like raw organs in your videos and yes, a lot of it too, like in all of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> liver, heart, kidney, brain, everything. So do you feel a difference now that you're not eating the organs anymore? Uh, I would do the raw organs mostly for my skin. It helped a lot with the redness, with the rosacea, um, but doing beef only without the organs, not really a big change. However, okay. I do have to say a new observation with more um, extended fasting here and there, it's helped a lot with my skin. So I almost mm. see this fasting thing as a replacement for what I got from the organs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. There's something to be said for the gut reset that you get from just a 24 hour fast is enough to reset your gut and reset your microbiome. So people can, they don't even necessarily need to go 48 hours. They can just do a 24 and get a lot of great gut health benefits for sure. Right. Exactly. And I do have to add to that. The 48s are absolutely not necessary in no yeah. way. Am I saying that fasting at all is necessary if you want to thrive? I mean, if you're a carnivore, you probably will naturally do some type of intermittent fasting because it's so satiating the foods you're eating, but it's not, it's not something that is needed. Yeah. I think it's kind of a natural evolution for a lot of people that do an animal-based diet or even a ketogenic diet. It's just like, you know, why not? <laughs> you're already getting the benefits of like, you know, eating this way as a fasting mimetic. So your body's already getting a lot of fasting benefits just from eliminating carbohydrates and a lot of the other foods. But I mean, it's like, it's kind of at the point you waited, how long did you wait doing carnivore before you started doing like the 48 hour fasts? Oh, I only started this, this past month. So it oh, would be okay. a half years basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Cause I, I came from a very disordered, you know, eating background of just all these binges and then starving before performances, right? It was horrible, mm. very malnourished too, because I was vegan. So there was too much to heal to even think about any type of fasting. Uh, when I first started carnivore, the, the first whole six months, I ate all day, every day, like mm -hmm. five to six meals, snacks, right? Just lots of food. And I didn't start doing two meals a day until I felt satiated enough to do so. Nothing was planned. It just fell into it. So that's why I feel like carnivores will inevitably do some type of IF if they're actually eating enough. Yeah, I agree. And I love how you didn't rush it. You just kind of instinctively were like, yeah, now it's time to eat a little bit less. I don't need those five meals anymore. And you, so you just kind of felt it out and just were like, okay, I just don't need it, right? Yes. I just felt so full and I ate to the point where I was like, I feel like throwing up if I even look at food. So yeah. what do you do? Don't eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
So what I was going to ask you about, like the gaining weight in the beginning, eating five or six meals a day, did you gain a lot of weight when you first started? To me, yeah, I felt like I gained a lot of weight, but luckily, you know, to this day, I asked my friends in school, did you notice that I gained weight? They're like, no, not really. And I think it's because I'm tall. I'm yeah. 5'10", so I'm sure I hide weight gain well because it just it's evenly dispersed. But I felt my clothes were so tight. I mm. had to buy new outfits. Nothing was fitting anymore. And I gained, I think, a total of 20, 25 to 28 pounds, somewhere al along those lines. But I, again, did not obsess over my weight or numbers or weighing, yeah. counting calories, right? All I knew was I was getting bigger. Now, was I getting fatter? I really don't think so. It was just my body focusing on healing. And, you know, looking back, I have photos. I don't look that overweight. I don't look that much bigger. Mm -hmm. So I feel like weight looks different when you're a carnivore. Yeah. You're weight. I agree. It definitely does. It's not like just, uh, I mean, unsightly, <laughs> exactly. I think it distributes a lot better for sure. Yes. It was nothing like the carb days, the vegan days where I looked bloated and puffy. Yeah. Did you do anything to try to lose the weight or was it just naturally that it came off? You know, I didn't fight it, uh, as shocked and scared and freaked out as I was, I knew it was necessary because I was very aware of what I did in the past. That was definitely damaging to my health my metabolism. I had no period. So I always kept reminding myself, I'm doing this to heal. I'm doing this for a better health down the line. So I didn't fight the weight gain. I did not resort to my old habits of restricting because I knew I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole anymore. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Did you have a lot of support in the process or was it just you trying to figure it out, watching videos? Like how did you mentally get through that? Um, I had zero support in the beginning because I didn't tell anyone that I was mm. eating meat again. I felt so embarrassed. Mm. So I hid that. Now my roommate noticed for sure. And then thank God she was, she was curious, but she was accepting. She didn't judge me. And in fact, she wanted to help. She even ended up cooking me meals when I was at class and I would come back because I don't have much break. I would walk back and then she would have the meals ready. And she was, she was a blessing for sure. Um, but I had her as my only support for the first few months, which was honestly enough because I felt like this was something I wanted to keep secret anyways. Mm. Um, I didn't tell my mo mom until maybe like three, four months in, um, because I wanted to make sure this was right for me. I didn't want to be like, oh, Hey, I'm eating meat. And then suddenly, oh, it's not right for me. And then tell everyone I'm back to being vegan. I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't tell my husband until four months and I lived with him. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Cause it's like, he works a lot. So it's easy for me to just kind of not show what I'm eating. And, um, yeah, so it was easy for us to skip, but we were on a vacation together, um, after four, I'd been carnivore for four months. And then it was kind of obvious that I was not eating anything else, but just the meat, you know, and the mm -hmm. eggs. And he's like, is that all you're eating? I'm like, yeah. And oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny that you also weighed it. You know, you do, you don't, people are going to freak out when they hear that you're eating this type of diet. And I think having the support is really, really, really helpful. Oh yes, for sure. And I feel it extra hard now with my boyfriend being carnivore and yeah. my little sister. So people around me in real life are changing towards this way of eating. And it, it's, ah, oh, it's so exciting for me. Yeah. I've been saying how long has your, your boyfriend's been carnivore for like a couple of weeks now? Yeah. Just two and a half, two and a half weeks so far. Yeah. Is he, how is he feeling? So he's currently going through the loose stools mm. and the dips in energy, kind of like the mental fog in the morning, the nausea. So mm. he's not feeling his best yet, but see, I, I'm, I try my best to make it clear to him. He's always, he's also coaching with Raymond, but he's aware. He's very aware because every day he hears somehow my voice talking about carnivore, right? Mm. So he knows the ins and the outs of this diet. He's very aware and he's, he's totally willing to commit and push through this adaptation. Oh, that's awesome. That's very, very cool. Yeah. So it, let's go through like a typical day for you right now, like eating exercise, like let's just talk about a typical day. Okay. So typical day now, 
So again, beef only, right? So really what I'm eating is either uh, ribeyes from Costco. I get the rib roast and I slice it and some raw beef fat on the side if I'm craving for extra fat. So those types of meals, if I'm doing OMAD, it will be around 5, 6 p.m. Um, and yeah, that's my OMAD. The, the hours before that, I'm just getting stuff done. Like if I want to edit something, I'll be doing it before I eat. Cause mm-hmm. I know that after I eat this OMAD, I'll just want to kick my feet up and relax. Cause you know, when you eat such a big meal and you break a fast like that, it's kind of, you do have to pay for that, that whole day of fasting. So yeah. you do feel a little bit groggy. And because I eat so much in one sitting, um, I, I will feel that effect. So I make sure that I time it in the evening so I can just rest after. So before that, it's like a huge motivation thing. Like I'm going to eat at 5, 6 p.m. So before this, I have all day to get stuff done. So I'll be taking my dogs out to play, go for a walk, play fetch, go to the park. Some type of activity will always be centered around my dogs. And I'll be active around that time. I don't go to the gym and I don't really allot time for exercises. Um, although I'm doing this June summer sculpt challenge where it's like squats every day, pushups every day. That's it. A couple minutes of my day. And then besides that, I will, it's really just spontaneous. I don't really have a schedule, whatever I feel like doing first, I'll do it. But usually by five, 6 PM, my daily tasks and goals are completed. And then music is always a part of that too. Mm, nice. Very yeah. nice. And you feel like you're sleeping good. You don't have energy issues at all. Everything is pretty solid. Yes. I, I never had sleeping issues. I feel like, you know, the sleeping part was not an issue. And with carnivore, nothing has changed. Still sleep like a baby. Even when I'm doing 40 hour fasts, the energy, um, if anything has just been extremely high, just that's really, awesome. Really good. Mood is great. Yeah. Very cool. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you about kind of being online, this whole YouTube thing, how does that, how is that affecting you mentally? I mean, I know that we get uh, as YouTubers criticism, we get lots of kind of feedback in that arena. How do you handle the negativity? How have you kind of navigated that whole experience? Mm -hmm. I've come a long way. I will have to say (laughs) definitely come a long way because, you know, when you are, so immersed in a practice room and then suddenly putting yourself out there for the entire world to judge, yeah, to, to praise, to criticize, whatever it is, it's a lot either way, positive or negative. And I remember my first time being reviewed by a vegan, you know, how mm-hmm. vegan channels review your, what I eat in a day videos. Oh, yeah. I, I was like floored. I was like, Oh my, Oh my gosh, I'm being criticized pretty badly by these two vegans and they're pretty big. And I started freaking out, but I have to say, I could not have survived it without my boyfriend Mm. because my boyfriend is, you know, because he is not immersed in this social media world where you are the center of attention, you are being watched and criticized. He helped me give his perspective. He's like, Hey, these people don't know you at the end of the day, what they're, what they're criticizing, what they're publicizing about you is literally just for views, for clout, for attention. So it really has nothing to do with you, who you are as a person. So if you just remember that, it's easy to just walk away and get over it. So when when he tells me that, it's like, oh yeah, he's right. And so now anytime people review me, it's like, great, more vegans come to my channel and hopefully learn that this other diet could help them if they're suffering. Um, But then like with the comments and the DMs that are very rude and uh, just not nice, I just block them. I don't reply. I I don't even set my notifications on for my Instagram or YouTube anymore because it it takes a lot away from your life. Like what if you're having a great moment with your boyfriend and then suddenly your phone lights up and then you see this nasty comment? Well, that just ruined that moment, right? Yeah. Like there's things you can do to just turn it off. So that's, that's kind of what I do. If I do happen to see it, I just delete it. Yeah. That's, that's the really tough part about all of this, I think is like having to deal with all that criticism. And it's usually what I find is like the, it's more about them than it is about you. Like you said, it's about clout. And when somebody has something negative to say about you, Mm -hmm. 
that's a reflection upon them, you know? Absolutely. Yes. I agree. 100% because yeah. hurt people will hurt people, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I love that you're still continuing to put out stuff. You're not letting it get you down. And, um, you know, the other flip side of that is like handling, cause I fall into this, like a lot of the positive stuff too. Like, it, do you get overwhelmed with kind of the amount of positive messages and comments and things that you get as well? Like how do, how do you feel about that? Oh yes, absolutely. It's very overwhelming. And, um, I do have to share that like when I'm out in Los Angeles, I get recognized as taking butter gal. So it's very strange. And I, I, I'm not saying that I don't like it because as long as my message is getting out there and people are realizing that, Hey, this carnivore diet is a legit thing. You could mm -hmm. actually try it and change. Um, but with these positive feedbacks, I think a lot of the times, um, these people are curious, um, they share their success stories, which I love hearing about. Um, but then they always follow up with a lot of questions about more, you know, they mm -hmm. want more, they want more information from you. Yep. They, want help. they basically want to copy what I am doing or maybe exactly right. Yeah. So they want to know more details so they can replicate your success, but little do they know, or maybe they do know that if you copy my diet or Sarah's diet, you're not going to have the same success, right? Because we're different people. Um, but they, they, I think they do fall into that maybe because we're, you know, social media figures. And, you know, I think when we put out videos and people see our face and hear our voice all the time, they start wanting our results and they start wanting, naturally wanting to do what we are doing. Right. Yeah. So there's a little bit of that. So when I get all these questions, there is absolutely no way I have the time to reply and give them everything I want to, Oops. sorry, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I do is, Hey, I just direct them to my challenge. Oh, I don't know what is going on. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> my little brother is calling me right now. He probably has something urgent to tell me. <laughs> uh, um, but, um, yeah. So what I do now is I have no choice, but to direct them to join, you know, the mighty networks that I created, mm -hmm. or hey, you can feel free to join the challenge where you can actually have live meetings with me. And I can answer your questions in person on zoom. Um, and I'm doing some coaching on the side as well. So it's gotten to that point where unfortunately I can't help all the DMS. I can't yeah. help the comments and I know it's for you too, because we have lives that we yeah. have. Right. Yeah. That's it's hard. Cause you feel like you really want to help. I mean, the, you start this stuff because you want to help people and put a message out there, but yeah. you literally cannot get to everything because it'll just drive you completely crazy. Exactly. So yeah. we need to balance. Like that's the one thing I learned that I have to balance and moderate is, you know, real life and social media. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's gotta be tough because you're doing so much. Yes. It, yeah. it is quite a lot. I definitely feel like I may have a little bit too much on my plate because yeah. I was a little bit too ambitious, but you know, if I, if I work hard, work hard now, I feel like I can definitely, you know, get the base built and then relax later. So it's fine. Yeah. You'll be able to streamline it. You're just, yeah. you're learning, you know, I was making yeah. like three, four videos a week and now I'm only making like one or two, you know, mm. I've been doing just one the last couple of months because it just gets really exhausting to film and film and like put yourself out there. Cause I, I know that you put your heart into all your videos and it's like yeah. the whole thing. It's, it's can be draining from the filming and putting it all together, editing it, making sure it's right. And then you put it out and you're like, you know, okay, how's this going to work? Is it? Yeah. So it's, it can be yeah. a lot for sure. Yeah. It is a lot. It is a lot. So I'm, I'm glad that you're doing the once a week thing because I feel like for YouTube videos, I know you put a lot of work and heart and creativity in yours too. Um, and it's actually more important to recover from that, mm -hmm. um, than, than do too much. So I think once a week is actually good for YouTube algorithm. I have yep. to say, yeah. I think so too. I think you're yeah. totally right. Awesome. Well, this has been really super fun. Where can people find you? Like I said, you're doing a lot of stuff. What's the best way if people want to find you work with you, you mentioned your challenge. How would they find that? Yeah. So Instagram, if you want to just catch up daily stuff, watch my stories. I always do fun stuff there. Uh, YouTube, if you want to have actual uh, detailed videos and explanations and detailed updates of what I'm up to with my carnivore journey, 
Um, and if you want to join the uh, community, it's called the Steak and Butter Gang. You can uh, join it through, I'll give the link to you. Um, yeah, I'll put it in the show notes so they perfect. can find it. Yeah. Yeah. So through there, you can join the community. And within the community is where I host these monthly 30 day challenges where you can join bi weekly Zoom calls with me and just chat, hang out, ask me questions. And honestly, it's just, it's not just me answering the questions everybody chimes in and we all learn from each other. So cool. Well, thank you, Bella. This has been awesome. And I will make sure I put all those links in the show notes for everyone so they can check out your challenges. And thanks again for coming on today. Thank you, Sarah. It was such a pleasure. Yeah.